Cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm not actually on the screen. I'm going to push a button and hope nothing explodes here. Yes. Cool. Uh, so my name's Rob Wormald. Uh, I'm a developer advocate on the Angular team at Google, so I'm not at the wrong conference, apparently. Um, so we're going to talk today a little bit about Angular, a little bit of AngularJS, where we're going, what we're doing. Uh, who in the crowd today has heard of Angular? Raise your hands. Awesome. How many of you are using AngularJS, Angular 1? Less of you. Angular 2, Angular 4? Cool. Anybody have no idea what Angular is at all? I love talks like this. Cool. OK, so uh, just a quick review, right? Uh, Web 1.0, this is where we came from. This is where we all started. Uh, Web 1.0, right? The basic idea is you have a server. That server builds you an HTML page. That HTML page gets sent out to your browser. Your browser renders it, repeat, right? And then we moved towards the new world of WebS. So this is Web 2.0, single page apps, SPAs, as you know them. The basic distinction here is that a single page application, right, you send it to the browser once, you send that HTML out once, and then from there, all communication is AJAX, right? It's JSON going back and forth. This is great. This is not an easy thing to do, but this is where Angular, AngularJS came from. So uh, you'll hear me switch between using the word AngularJS and the word Angular in this talk today. Uh, just so we're clear, and kind of this is a thing that we're working to, to make better and better, but AngularJS we refer to as kind of the old version of Angular, Angular 1x. Uh, and then we refer to Angular 2x just as Angular. You'll probably hear us say it's just Angular. So when we're talking about Angular, we mean the new, shiny, awesome TypeScript Angular. So uh, if you don't use Angular today, Angular is a web framework. As I said, it comes with all of these awesome features, uh, things like internationalization. We've got a command line tool, some cool language service integrations with TypeScript. I could do like a two-hour talk talking about all of this stuff. Uh, most of you are using Angular, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, we're getting some kind of more interesting stuff today. So. Quick refresher, if you haven't seen Angular before, if you haven't used Angular 2 before, this is an Angular 2 component. Uh, if you're using Angular 1x, it's very much like you used to write components in 1.5. Uh, we'll just kind of flip through these pieces. So all Angular apps are composed out of components. Uh, you compose components into trees of components. This builds you an app. A couple of things just to point out for you here. Uh, Angular, we put together with decorators. This decorator is this at component symbol here. This is a thing that comes from TypeScript. It's just a way of attaching metadata to a class, a little bit of extra information, right? So on this, we're saying this is an Angular component. It's got a selector there, how we use it in HTML. It's got a template, which has some other components nested in it. We've got some data binding here, right? So this is HTML. We want to bind the status from our class down here. Uh, this is just a copy maker. This is simple data binding. And then to listen to events, right, set up a button. We've got a click handler here. So the parentheses mean when I click the button, go ahead and call this method. This is Angular in a nutshell. Uh, we also do dependency injection. Typically, when I go to JavaScript conferences and I talk about dependency injection, people are like, what? What is dependency injection? Why would you do this? I love coming to build because I can talk about dependency injection, and everybody in this room is probably convinced that it's a good idea already. Right? So in Angular, uh, we use TypeScript for dependency injection. So you can see here what I'm saying is I need an instance of my log service injected into my component. This is not special syntax. This is just TypeScript. So Angular knows to look at that TypeScript symbol and say, cool, we need a log service. Look at the injector and pass it in. So we use Angular quite a lot at Google. And this is what I really want to talk about today, why we do it, how we do it, some of the cool things we're doing with TypeScript. So I want to talk about where we use Angular inside of Google, what we use it for, why we did it. And then beyond that, why we chose TypeScript, why we use TypeScript in Angular. So we like this phrase, Google runs on Angular. Um, so things like this. I don't, I'm not able to launch a product. I can't ship anything at Google without Angular. All of our internal tooling for launch approvals, release management, that's all written in Angular. Uh, we can't hire people without Angular. Everything at Google, all hiring-wise, goes through Angular applications. I don't get paid. I don't get raises, or <laughs> I don't get my pay demoted without Angular. Uh, we don't track bugs without Angular, right? And more and more and more. So the point of this is that we basically build every internal tool at Google with Angular. And people, when, when we say this sometimes, 
they don't believe me. So this is, I think, the first time I get to actually show this to people in public. I'm just making sure my boss is not watching. She's not good. Uh, so inside of Google, this is a build rot log. So inside of Google, we have a gigantic mono repo that all of our code lives in a single place. This means anytime we send a PR, anytime we make any code change inside of Google, we run that across the entirety of the Google code base and test and see. So what you're looking at here on the left is a normal day, right? This is your average build graph at Google. Most things are working. Most things aren't failing on the bottom. Uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago now, we screwed up, and that happens occasionally. So keep in mind, this is the entirety of Google. This is Gmail. This is Docs. This is all of the things that you know that Google does. We screwed up, and look what happens, right? <laughs> And this is, this is a scary graph for us to look at, but this is indicative to us of, of really how much Angular is used at Google. That's kind of the point of this slide. Didn't take too long to fix, but it was three hours of very non-productive day at Google that day. Another way to put it is this, right? Literally, everybody at Google is pretty much using Angular. And so for us, we have a few big goals over the next year. Um, one of them is making sure that all the tooling that we use at Google for JavaScript is going to work perfectly with TypeScript. I'll talk a little bit more about this in just a second. We also want to make sure that if you're using AngularJS today, raise your hands again if you're using AngularJS today, most of you. Anybody using Angular Material out there? Like two of you, awesome. So. Uh, so you know, if you're using Material 1 today, we want to make sure that if you're using Material and you want to go to Material 2, that that will work pretty seamlessly. So that's all there. The thing we're doing is inside of Google, we're now teaching a brand new Angular course inside of Google. Uh, we've had something like 3,000 people go through it. I mention this not to sort of just tell you irrelevant information, but the interesting thing about this is now that we're using TypeScript inside of Google, we have a bunch of really, really good Google engineers working on TypeScript, whereas previously they haven't. So we're already seeing really good tools coming out of our internal teams to the outside world, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Uh, anybody doing upgrade? Anybody going from AngularJS to Angular doing the upgrade thing? A couple of people? Cool. So we're doing that inside of Google as well, uh, because these projects are things that we can't just throw away and start again. So you might have heard of them. This is Google Cloud Platforms. So if you've ever used any of our cloud services, that's all written in Angular. They're in the process of, of upgrading to Angular 2. Uh, Google Analytics, Firebase, uh, Google Shopping Express doing the same thing. So these are public sites that are going through this upgrade process that we talk about. One thing that's cool is that these are four pretty big name properties inside of Google, which means that we give them a lot of support. We're learning quite a lot from these upgrade processes. And of course, people who are doing upgrade kind of benefit from that. Uh, this just launched as well. If you haven't seen it, this is our new open source website. This is Google Open Source. This tracks all of the open source work inside of Google, right? Angular's down there. Uh, this is also written in Angular if you want to poke around. This is an open source app as well. We've been contributing to this. So if you want to get an idea of how kind of some apps are built at Google, you can check out the Google, Google open source website. So why do we do open source? Why do we do things like TypeScript? Uh, these are products we've made, right? MapReduce, Bigtable, Dremel, Spanner. These are all things that are done inside of Google. And you've probably heard of the outside world equivalents, right? These are clones and things that we haven't shipped. Typically, somebody goes, that's a good idea, and redoes it. So we like working in open source. TypeScript's a big part of that. Why do we do open source? A, because we like getting the credit, right? This is the honest thing. We like being able to say that we do good work. The other thing is that it allows us to build tools that work for everybody. I'll come back around to this, but we really like building tools that work for people. We learn a lot from sending these tools out to the world. So making tools that work inside and outside of Google and open sourcing them is a big deal for us. Uh, training, it also means that right, if we're using the same tooling inside and outside of Google, we can hire developers. We don't have to train them on all the weird and wacky Google things that we do, and we'll talk about that. Hiring as well, right? It's super easy to hire Angular developers because there's a lot of them. It means that we can have people join Google. They're immediately productive. We don't have to teach them some strange kind of Google language. And of course, quality, right? Like We have the world's best QA department because we have tens of thousands of developers testing every single thing, thing we do. Additionally, you get the benefit of this because we're testing all of this code inside of Google on all of the Google projects that use it. So it kind of goes both ways. So we talk about this shared infrastructure, right? We have a huge open source community like everybody here, and then we have a huge number of teams inside of Google. Um, and right now, we have to support, in a lot of cases, kind of two sets of work. And this is the thing that I think I really want to get across to you today. This is the point of why we're here. So as of a couple of months ago, 
We had Angular, right? Angular works inside of Google. It works outside of Google. Everybody does this. This is the one that surprises people a little bit. So we've been doing TypeScript, and you've, we've been hearing us talk about TypeScript for probably two years now. But up until February, we actually weren't allowed to use TypeScript kind of widely at Google. So we made this big bet that we thought, OK, definitely we like it on the Angular team. Um, and so we're going to kind of go through this process, which I'll talk about in a second. And the other thing that right now we're not sharing is the outside world uses our CLI, which is awesome. But in the inside, we're not using tools like Webpack and Gulp, right? We're using internal Google tooling. So I mentioned this, this kind of why have we not been allowed to use TypeScript for a while. So at Google, we have some approved languages. So pretty much any code that goes to Google production is written in one of these five languages. Um, reasons for this being, right, we want to have consistent standards. We want to have consistent code style. More importantly, we want to have tools that allow us to refactor and test. We have this gigantic repository, right? So we need to be able to do things like automation. We need to be able to do renaming, renaming of code across the entire repository. So we have some rules and restrictions. Um, there's an asterisk on JavaScript there, and I'll show you why here. So JavaScript is thing that we've written all of our front end code in JavaScript for a long time. But we actually write it in kind of this special flavor of JavaScript. So this is on the left side. This is Clojure JavaScript. If you've heard of Clojure Compiler, uh, this is the sort of language that goes along with Clojure Compiler. So you can see at the top, of course, we've got our own wacky kind of Google module format at the top here. We've got a class, right? This is just an ECMAScript class. But what you can see is we're doing typed JavaScript here. This is typed script, right? But you're doing everything in these kind of inline JS doc comments, right? This is how we've done typed JavaScript at, at, at Google for 10 years, probably. The benefit of this is that obviously we can feed this into Clojure's compiler and get really, really good optimization results out of this, right? So it's an incredibly powerful tool, but Literally nobody writes JavaScript like this, right? It's a very disgusting thing to do. It's hard to do. It's hard to read. It's hard to reason about. And nobody really likes it. So about two years ago, we had this brilliant idea that was like, well, we don't want to use Clojure. We'll invent our own language, right? So this kind of probably popped up on Hacker News for three months. We thought we were going to be clever and write at scripts. We're going to invent our own language. Pro tip, don't ever do this unless you're Anders or somebody like that, because you don't want to write your own language, right? So the TypeScript team called us and they said, hey, a lot of the stuff you've been talking about in AppScript, it looks a lot like what, where we want to take TypeScript. There's a lot of commonality here. Why don't we chat? And so we did. That a couple of really good ideas. And we said, the heck with AppScript. And so we've moved everything over to TypeScript. So again, back to this, this sort of closure JavaScript here, right? The equivalent TypeScript that sort of expresses exactly the same amount of information, right, is a third as long, I think much easier to read. And if you think about this at scale across hundreds of thousands of millions of lines of JavaScript, of JavaScript at Google, right, this makes a big difference. So we thought, this is great. We want to go ahead and get TypeScript to be an official language so that everybody at Google can use it. There's a process. It's documented. You can go read about it inside of Google, right? So you have to apply. There's a checklist of stuff you have to do. We have to make sure that we have tools that work and refactoring tools, and we can test it, and we get all the things that all those other languages I showed you, you know, all the things that they work. And then we go through a committee, like everything else at Google. There's a committee, and there's data, and they make decisions, right? And that's it, right? It'd be simple. It'd be easy. Just to prove it. It's simple. Except that we had to go through this cycle a couple of different times. We had to go back, and the committee would say, well, we'd like you to change this. We'd like you to tweak this. It took almost two years from the time that we started to actually get through to get TypeScript approved at Google. Uh, we're happy to announce that six weeks ago or so, that was officially, uh, officially got approved. So basically, any team at Google who wants to can now use TypeScript. We've already seen over the past six weeks, and I can't give you numbers, but we've seen a huge increase internally of teams who are using TypeScript. Uh, I wish I could show you some of the internal discussions because people love it. It's changed, I think, how, how developers at Google write JavaScript. So we're pretty excited about this, even though it took two years. So we get to add TypeScript to this list of approved languages at Google. So if you're sitting in this room, if you're at this conference, you probably know TypeScript and why we like it. Inline types, I just mentioned that, right? Much cleaner, much easier to read. Uh, it's a fast recompile. Google Clojure, on, on average, takes like five or six times as long as TypeScript does to recompile, so that's good for our productivity. Decorators, that thing I showed you at the beginning, 
Decorators is something that we used in Angular Dart, which was kind of the precursor to Angular. Um, so decorators are a thing that we liked, and we get them in TypeScript. They're proposed for ECMAScript. Hopefully we'll get them one day, but TypeScript gives us them today, and I think it, it really makes Angular a great framework to use. Uh, Closure compatible. Now, I talked, and I just, you know, I just talked a bunch of rubbish about that Closure compiler JavaScript, but the thing is, it's really, really fast, it's really, really compressible, and it's because it has all of that type information. So one of the things that we had to make sure that we could do if we were going to get TypeScript to work at Google was all of this Closure compiler, uh, Closure JavaScript that we've written, right, with all those JS doc inline annotations, we need to make sure that our TypeScript plays nicely with that. So one of the things we had to write was tooling that goes in both directions. So we can take our existing JavaScript code and have it work with TypeScript, and vice versa, we can have our TypeScript code get emitted with all those JS doc annotations so you don't have to write them, and then we can feed that into Closure Compiler and get the best minification results. So it's really the best of both worlds. Uh, we get really, really nice IDE, IDE support. I was going to demo this to you, but I'm on my, my Windows laptop, and I actually don't know how to do it on my Windows laptop. So if you want to come over and talk to us at the booth, I will give you a demo of this. Uh, we have some really, really cool stuff that works with Angular templates and, and TypeScript. Uh, build files. This I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, automated conversion, right? We can do TypeScript back and forth. We can do all these clever things because we have static type information. And then we have this awesome community, right? So now we get to bring this entire community of build people. We get the awesome Angular open source community and get kind of everybody working in the same direction. So now TypeScript works inside and outside of Google. This is great, right? We're bringing our things together. I mentioned, though, that we don't use tools like Gulp and Grunt and Uglify and Rollup and Webpack. Sorry, Sean Larkin, if you're in the audience. We don't use any of these tools inside of Google. This is what everybody uses outside to build stuff. Inside of Google, we use a tool called Blaze, uh, and of course with Clojure Compiler. So Blaze is sort of Gulp uh, written by computer scientists, if you like. It's a very powerful tool. It builds any language. We use it to build effectively everything at Google from Angular all the way down to Gmail, right? It's all built with this Blaze tool. About a year ago, Google open sourced it. So uh, if you take the word Blaze and you rearrange the letters, you get Bazel. So Bazel is the open source version of Blaze. Uh, this is, again, that build tool we've pushed out to the world. And so one of the things that we want to make sure is that all the stuff that we get inside of Google with Bazel. So for example, I could pull up my laptop here. I could check out Gmail, and I could build it. it Blazel would bring in all the dependencies. It would bring in everything I need to build Gmail. So this is how we do everything at Google. And it's, frankly, it's awesome. It's an amazing, amazing tool. It's hard to use. It's not easy to configure. But we want to make sure that developers get all of these amazing benefits. So our team has sort of embarked on this project we called ABC. ABC is Angular with Bazel and Clojure. So this is us beginning to bring Google's tooling to the outside world for the first time. It's not just going to build JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, as I said, because we use it to build C and C++ and Java and all of these things, uh, we've seen already teams who are doing .NET integrations, things like this. So this is a thing that we think is going to be very powerful. Um, we'd really like to align all these tools with the inside and the outside world. Um, and we hope that really the community kind of picks up on Bazel and begins to build the things that we won't build. So Google's clearly not going to build a .NET plugin for this, likely. But somebody else could. And then you can obviously share it out with the community. So, Bazel is a thing that we're super excited about. Uh, this will be coming probably in the next three months or so. Um, if you're a big enterprise, you're working across platform, you've got some crazy, ridiculous build system, again, just come and chat with me and say hello. I'd like to hear what you're doing so it kind of aligns with what we're doing. So uh, our plan for ABC, so we're going to uh, go ahead and build Angular Core this way with Bazel. Uh, today, Angular Core is built with like a just like gigantic shell script. It's really not a nice thing. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. So the team is at home right now rebuilding our entire build system for Angular to run on, uh, to run on Bazel. We're then going to go ahead and move the Angular material project over to Bazel and get that building test with that. And then this is what I mentioned with early adopters. So if you're interested in using Bazel or Blaze or you just want to talk about build tools, then reach out to our team. Uh, we're, gonna have, we're actually going to go ahead and offer support to a couple of teams who want to work through this process with us. Um, and if there's something you're interested in, please, please come and talk to me, and we can go through it. Uh, so this is the Angular website. This is angular.io. We're just about to relaunch this. It's got a whole new set of documentation. Uh, definitely looking for feedback on this. This is angular.io. Lots of docs on here. Uh, Bazel will be discussed on here. All the TypeScript stuff we've talked about will be discussed in here. So for us, uh, 
Dan Rosenwasser came up on stage six months ago at NGConf and he showed this slide kind of inverted, TypeScript uh, loves Google. And for us, we just wanted to say that we really, really love working with TypeScript. We're super happy to be here. We're super excited to see that we have a whole amazing group of people here that are excited to see what we're doing. Um, and really generally, like, we are super excited just that this is the beginning of this entire new world for Angular. Uh, we're not really a big .NET shop. We don't know a lot of .NET developers. We don't know where y'all are coming from. So that's why we're here. We want to talk to you. We want to hear what you're looking to do with Angular. Uh, what's not working for you? What's working for you? What you'd like to see us do? Um, and really, we're, we're here to listen. So this is me, Rob Wormald, down on Twitter. Uh, please reach out. Come and talk to me. I'll be over here. Uh, any questions, come and find me. Otherwise, thanks for listening. <laughs>